so um, the next speaker is going to be um, Rustan Turdibayev from the University of Santiago de Compostela. Are you there, Rustan? Yes, I think. Uh, yes. And are you ready to present? Uh, yes. Uh, is, is my presentation visible? Uh, yep, I can see it. Okay, okay I'd like to uh, thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to, to give a talk. And uh, I forgot to mention, unfortunately, in the abstract that this is a joint work with, uh, with uh, Farhat Eshmata from New Uzbekistan University in, in Tashkent and Xavier Garcia Martinez from uh, Universidad de Vigo. So, uh, uh, like uh, half of my talk is dedicated on the Poisson structure on the pairs of invariance of matrices, but the first part will be probably a review of some results, and I will, I will probably say some things that are already well known, but uh, uh, let me go with it. So we have GLN acting on the direct product of d tuples of matrices by uh, conjugation, simultaneous conjugation, and uh, this gives a <coughs> this induces an action of uh, GLN on the Look on the algebra of the uh, on the coordinate ring or coordinate algebra, and uh, as we heard today in the in my first speaker, um, the first and the second fundamental theorems they are well known by uh, Rajesi Rasmuslov and well also by Sibirsky apparently that uh, uh, it's finally generated by traces of the products of traces with uh, with words of lengths no more than uh, some fixed number and uh, defining relations between these generators, they all follow from fundamental identity, which is also a consequence of uh, Kayla Hamilton theorem. Uh, now, there is also uh, this fact in the paper by Precesi that one can interpret this algebra that we commonly denote by C sub ND uh, as a tensor product where these, these are free variables. Um, Basically, we take the traces of these generic matrices and then treat the traceless part separately. So all defining relations should be sort of here. And uh, this, uh, as practice shows, eases the, the presentation of the defining relations between the generators. Uh, some more facts about this. Uh, this, this algebra has cool dimension d minus 1 n squared plus 1. It's uh, known to be a coin Macaulay, which means we have Hiranaka decomposition, uh, which means that we have a um, set of homogeneous set of parameters, or also known as primary invariants, uh, exactly as the cool dimension. And uh, it's, a, um, it's a, a free module uh, over this algebra with, uh, with basis uh, which are also called secondary invariances at the one, etc., at the k. So uh, once we know the Hiranaka decomposition, we can say what is a what is an invariant of uh, of uh, the space uh, well tuples of matrices also. Uh, now, uh, if we look at the the first interesting case after probably well not the first one but. Um, uh, first, in the, in the sense of pairs of matrices, which is interesting, is uh, in the case of three. So in Tiranishi, in 1986, he uh, establishes that these 10, uh, how many? Two, six, seven, eight, oh, uh, 11, 10 generators, they uh, form um, uh, primary invariants. And uh, this trace here is the, the missing generator. And there is this uh, Hiranaka decomposition for C sub 3, 2. And uh, then it's apparent that generating relation should involve the square of this trace. And the, the, the relation itself is uh, quite horrendous. And it appears in the work of Nakamoto over Z. And uh, as we said, that once you, we change to uh, traceless versions of the matrices as, as follows, uh, then the generating uh, relation is is more or less presentable, in, and it appears in the paper of uh, Slaxon, Drensky, and Sajikova. Moreover, what we were able to find as well is that uh, one can also rewrite this uh, generating relation uh, as follows, where these Ri's are exactly the defining relation of uh, some object called Kalajora-Moser space 
that this happens for n equals three. So in general, this is the definition of culture Moser space, uh, but you have to take the JIT quotient by simultaneous conjugation as well. And this happens in, uh, in our paper, uh, in, uh, in this paper. Uh, now, um, uh, what else? So now, if we look at the case C42, uh, the set of generators, minimal set of generators, were found by Drensky and Sadikova, and they imply uh, the method of Abiasis and Italuga uh, as uh, considering the minimum generating set as a GL2 module, where GL2 acts on the this matrices X and Y in a natural way. And then they find that uh, it's a semi-simple module. So they reduce it to simple cases. And uh, each of them is a highest weight. And this blue in blue color, I have the highest weight uh, vectors, highest weight generators. So we have 32 generators. And um, now about the relations. So defining relations among these 32 generators were uh, will start appearing in degree 12. They were found all of them, to, uh, which appears in the degrees 12, 13, and 14 by Terensky and Vascala in this paper of, uh, of 2009. And so far, to our knowledge, there was uh, no progress. So recently, just, just really recently, we have finished writing the first draft. Hopefully, we'll put it up online soon to archive. So we obtained that. Uh, uh, the full ideal of defining relations is uh, generated by 105 polynomials, and the highest degree that uh, these polynomials appear to be in uh, degree 20. And uh, we use uh, this uh, Poisson algebra structure on uh, this algebra of pairs of matrices to, to be able to recover these um, uh, defining relations. And uh, once we do that, we find out that only eight uh, defining relations are enough to, to be able to generate uh, this ideal of relations using uh, the Poisson algebra structure, which I'll explain in, in, the, in the last slide. So before I talk about what is the Poisson structure here, let me give some applications of, uh, of this result. So the first one is, of course, about the Hiranaka decomposition. So now, once we have the relations, we can find it easily. But even before uh, some information was known, so for instance, the, the primary invariants were known by Tiranishi for, for this algebra to be 17 traces. We slightly modify them to our, uh, well, to the Trinsky and Sadik of the generators. And uh, the Hilbert series for uh, this algebra was also computed. And um, for our purposes, not just the by graded, but a simply graded one is also enough. And, uh, this one appears in the in the paper by Djokovic, uh, where if you put the denominator as the degrees of these primary invariants, then the numerator becomes uh, this polynomial with positive coefficients. So it's apparent that uh, the sum of the coefficients is 48, so there should be 48 secondary invariants. And uh, once we have them, of course, the uh, Hilbert series reads out easily, but this one also suggests a lot in which degrees they should appear. But now, once we have 105 relations, we can uh, easily find the Grobner basis by killing uh, these primary invariants. And we get the list of the second invariants uh, explicitly as follows. So they appear exactly in these degrees, which are given in uh, this polynomial. Uh, now, another application to um, of this result could be uh, the um, the exact um, description of the commuting variety of four by four matrices. So we look at the four by four matrices that commute uh, pairs of them and uh, at their GLT quotient by GL4. And we find that the, uh, the coordinate ring is just uh, uh, generated by these 14 variables and up to 15 relations. Why 14? Well, because uh, once we go back to these generators, you can see that Starting from A15, all of them contain commutators, so they become zero. So at most, we have 14. And uh, yeah, so once we make all these uh, generators starting from 15, zero in our ideal of relations, we recover 15 uh, ideal generated by these 15 relations, which we also found by some other methods in uh, a paper that is already in the archive. 
about culture, most spaces, and uh, invariant community variety. Uh, so here I have six uh, polynomials, and then the symmetric six uh, are added, and three, which are uh, sort of symmetric up to uh, the action of changing x and y. Now, uh, let me talk about the Poisson structure. So uh, before, let me just quickly review what is a Poisson algebra. So it's uh, just an algebra as a, ve as it's a vector space with two operations. Um, here they are. So it's just commuted to the solution of operation and a Lie algebra operation, which also have compatibility condition. And now uh, this ring uh, admits a Poisson structure because we have a symplectic form defined this way. And uh, between the polynomials, we can mm, do this way. Now, how does it uh, look on the, mm, on, the, on the generators of this algebra, right? Because this one is kind of abstract. So to be able to compute things on the generators, we need, uh, we need to do a little bit more work. So uh, take just a uh, free algebra on two variables, free associative algebra. And uh, define this kind of bracket. So you take words of uh, made of x and y. So let's say the red one and the blue one, and then you cut in arbitrary two places. You select two elements from from them, compute their uh, symplectic form on these two elements, which is defined this way, and then you uh, put the well the right hand side of the whatever is left from the first word. Then you join with the left hand side, and you do the same with the blue one. So uh, as an example, let's say the computation is straightforward, but uh, uh, it gives you many, many monomials. And with this bracket, it turns out uh, this becomes a Leibniz algebra. So Leibniz algebra is a sort of uh, um, non-skew-symmetric uh, generalization of Lie algebra. Uh, so now, uh, well, if you don't know what is a Leibniz algebra, it doesn't matter, because what we'll do now is we'll consider uh, the commutator uh, space here, so made of all uh, words like this, which are just formal words of a b minus b a, or a and b are words. So this becomes an uh, abelian ideal here in this Leibniz algebra. So we can take a quotient. So once you take a quotient, turns out this becomes a Lie algebra. So it's a, one of the examples of uh, of necklace Lie algebras that are known. Uh, maybe I introduced by. Uh, Bokland and Lubrin on, uh, on general quivers. And uh, now there is this result by Ginsburg that says that if you take uh, the following map, uh, so you take a uh, necklace here and send it to uh, a polynomial map which evaluates pairs of matrices uh, of their traces on the same monomial, then this becomes a Lie algebra uh, homomorphism. So this known like uh, structure, non associative structure here, the Lie structure here, we can sort of push it to uh, the Poisson structure that we have exactly here. So it's exactly the same Poisson structure that uh, was given by the symplectic form. So how we can use it? So let me show you one example of uh, computation that we do. So imagine we're, uh, we're back to our case of four by four matrices and I want to compute uh, this Poisson bracket. So what I do is I change from A and Bs, I go back to X and Y to the, to the version with the trace. So once I open this brackets by multilinearity, I apply uh, the necklace uh, sort of this definition of uh, taking the bracket, and then I push it back to traces of X and Y, and then go back to the uh, uh, to, uh, to traceless versions. So in the end, I get this result, but if you see here, this is degree four, so we're in four by four matrices. We can use uh, for this expression a Cayley Hamilton uh, theorem and then compute the bracket once again. So now we have uh, two expressions this one and this one. And also, one of our generators that is actually involving these two traces is, is there. So, what we get in the end by solving this two, two equations with two unknowns, we get uh, the value of these two traces. So this is one of the uh, methods that we uh, imply. And now uh, let me tell how we get the, this 105 relations. So first, uh, inductively, we obtain the unique description of the, of the values of the traces of uh, these necklaces uh, of degree no more than 11. So 
So these uh, give us uh, uniquely uh, the expressions like uh, like before. And this is done really fast. So you can almost say that it's uh, kind of brute force. And uh, once we have that, we, we obtain um, our values uh, of the Poisson bracket uh, on all generators when we act with A5 or A6. So A5 is just a trace of uh, a, a square, uh, B, B square, and A6 is trace of AQ. Uh, what I also didn't mention is when, when we take Poisson brackets, we uh, kind of from total grading of two words or two traces, we obtain uh, a, an expression in the, the sum of the grading minus two. So we can obtain something very long uh, in the set. And now when we start uh, our procedure from degree 12, uh, the method that we implied before will not give us uh, the exact uh, solution. They will give us the expressions up to relations that we're looking for. And there we need to, uh, the brute force doesn't work anymore because uh, computations are becoming harder and harder. Uh, this trick of going from traces matrices to trace matrices to X and Y, computing Poisson bracket there, it becomes a little bit exponentially hard. So uh, we need to be a little bit uh, technical there. But nevertheless, we uh, once we obtain the relations, uh, we incorporate it into our candidate ideal. And uh, we also compute its uh, Poisson bracket with A5 and A6. And we add this to candidate ideal as well. So this way, imagine if we, you have a, let's say, degree uh, 14 relation, once you take it with Poisson bracket with this one, you end up in degree 15. So you might get a new relation for free, sort of in, in the next degree, in the higher degree, which, uh, uh, which, is, which speeds up the calculations. And then uh, the Hilbert series of uh, this algebra is also known by Tiranisha and also by um, Reynolds Stambridge. So, we know at each uh, step, at, uh, at each uh, certain by degree, uh, how many relations, how many dimensions we're missing. So we can fill it up. And once it's full, we just skip it and we go to the next one. So this is our algorithmic approach. And in the end, uh, we find that uh, once we reach a really high degree, uh, we're missing a very small amount of relations. And we find that these are coming from sort of the central elements of this necklace Lie algebra, uh, which is known to be uh, generated by, by, uh, by powers of the commutators. So that's why we take them uh, expressions like this and we study, we expand them uh, on our own kind of, and uh, uh, we find the missing relations. So these missing relations, they don't contribute to a higher degree by taking these, let's say, Poisson brackets because they are in the center of the necklace Lie algebra. So uh, it's okay if we miss, it, miss them in the like, first uh, points, we can, we can add them later. So as a, as a result, we obtain like a, an ideal of relations. We check that Hilbert series coincides with the known one. So it's definitely the same ideal. And uh, once we do that, we reorganize our work to see that only eight relations uh, exactly in these by degrees, and these three coming from the, uh, as I said, the, like uh, traces of the commentators to the power six, seven, and eight, uh, these are enough to generate the whole ideal. So if you do, uh, if you have these eight relations by acting with uh, also in brackets, with just A5 and A6, this uh, adjoint maps, uh, we are able to get, uh, to get everything. And I don't know if I can uh, show these relations a little bit. I mean, is it visible, the browser that I have? Uh, no. Mm, where no. are you going to show it? I don't quite get you. Uh, in, in, a, in a browser, in a, because I don't have them in the PDF. I... Oh, I think all we see is a PDF. Oh, maybe. Oh, I can I, I can stop sharing and start the sharing. Yes, the... Do that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So here, uh, well, it's an overlay on our project. So I have 105 uh, polynomials, but unfortunately, it reads it displays only until 101. So as you can see, this the last one, for example, it it becomes very very long. 
and it has huge coefficients. And some of them, uh, I don't know if it's, uh, yes, yeah, so some of them are actually, uh, yeah, even, even those eight that we have that we generate by uh, Poisson, they, the first ones are quite okay, they're quite visible, but then starting from three and four, they become quite huge and five. And the last one is also quite lengthy. So, and apparently they have really huge coefficients, which happen to be uh, the, the prime decomposition of which also contains very big primes to our surprise. So, uh, right now we, we don't know what to do with them. So, and uh, uh, let me share the PDF file again. And yeah, ah, that's it. So <laughs> thank you for your attention. This uh, this all I wanted to present. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions for us, Dam? I just have a remark <laughs> uh, that. Um, <clears throat> the estimate uh, for the monomial, trace monomials is not uh, exponential, but it's quadratic. By, uh, uh, yes, yes. Me, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I copied from one of the original papers, I guess, then it was known that it was uh, okay. quadratic, yes. <laughs> <You better. laughs> <Thank you. clears throat> uh, so, may I ask a question? Um, uh, my question is the following one. For all this uh, calculation, uh, uh, what uh, kind of computer program did you use? So we use uh, Wolfram Mathematica for generating this ideal, but then to, to check uh, that this ideal has uh, exactly the same Hilbert series, we use uh, uh, Macaulay. We install the known Hilbert series, so it speeds up the process and uh, it gives us the uh, the solution, the uh, the Grobner basis. So, but we need to be very careful with uh, with grading. So first, we were choosing some grading that we thought was better, and in two weeks, it didn't give us uh, the answer. So <laughs> later, we found the the best uh, uh, ordering of the generators, and we got the result on I think like overnight, just. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I've got a quick question if I can ask it. So um, you use a, a Poisson bracket structure um, on yes. on this this idea of, of relations. Is that something which is peculiar to the case of two four by four matrices, or can you? Uh, no, uh, no. Uh, this uh, this appears on like it just needs to be pairs of matrices of any size. It uh, okay. appears. Hmm. So we just started with four because uh, case three was solved already. And yes. Four was uh, partially known, and, but for five, I I doubt that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know the the Hilbert series. Well, the Hiramaka decomposition seems if it does exist there, uh, which which it does, but it will have a very huge basis. So. I don't know if it's applicable, but for some other things, we have some ideas where we, we can apply again this trick. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can I ask something that was this uh, 105, the total number of minimal generators of the ideal? Uh, or, minimal, or... minimal, probably yes, but we didn't try to to reduce it to, to some other number. We were happy just to, <laughs> to find <laughs> the, exactly the ideal. Well, by our algorithm, uh, we couldn't do it before. And once once it stopped, uh, we, we didn't try to reduce these uh, relations. But, but, but by the construction of our uh, process, we had to stop only when we got 105. So. Mm. Thank you. Well, 
Well, if there are no more questions, I suggest everybody goes and gets a cup of coffee. Thank you again, Mr. Thank you. <laughs> Can I answer uh, now uh, the question in the chat? Oh, uh, yes, go ahead. That's a good idea. <laughs> Uh, right, so so it's still not a TADO because um, if you see the question in the chat, uh, you need to quotient not only by linear forms, by squares of linear forms, but by squares of all kinds of elements in order to get a TADO. And that's not uh, the exterior algebra. The, you cannot get the exterior algebra by quotienting by a TADO. Okay, so what exactly is, is a TADO again? Uh uh, the TADO should be closed under all substitutions, so you have to replace, uh, substitute the variables with uh, arbitrary elements from the free associative algebra, even higher degree elements, all oh, kinds of substitutions. Right. And uh, here, uh, so uh, Benjamin is uh, suggesting to replace variables with linear forms, but that's not enough for a TADO. Um, thank you. Yes, I, th I think you're right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you cannot get uh, the exterior algebra by a TADO. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah.